Since the dawn of Starbucks, Seattle has become the coffee capital of America. There's just something about being subjected to overcast weather the majority of the year that makes having a warm cup in your hand a necessity. Maybe it's because we need an extra jolt of caffeine to endure the gloom, or just enjoy the idea of getting cozy in a dimly lit cafe as the rain patters down. Either way, us Seattleites consume more coffee than any other city in America. There's shops on nearly every block, and today we're gonna explore some of those. I am Monica and I will be your coffee tour guide for the day. I just want to say I'm not a coffee expert at all, but I sure do drink a lot of it. We're going to be going to eight different coffee shops today and these are ones that I just thought were noteworthy and cool. There are so many out there though, so comment below which one you would want to go to the most that I show today or one that I missed that you think is really great as well. If you're new, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. All right, let's get into this video. All right, first stop of the day, we're outside of the Starbucks Reserve Roastery. So this is a roastery and tasting room. As you can see, like there's people behind me taking photos outside of it. It's really become like more of a place people wanna go more than the first ever Starbucks. So let's check it out. The roastery opened in 2014, and since then it has grown into a main coffee bar, an actual bar, the Princey Cafe, and the Experience Bar. Today, I decided to take a seat at the Experience Bar and I tried out the Siphon Flight. Siphoning is a style of brewing made popular in the 1800s. As you can see, it kind of looks like a science experiment. And basically how it works is, the bottom chamber is filled with water and as it heats up, the pressure causes it to fill to the top chamber. Then the coffee grounds are added directly into the water and they're lightly stirred. After sitting for a few moments, it's filtered back down to the lower chamber and you're left with a nice full-bodied cup of coffee. Starbucks serves it in a kettle with a couple of their tasting cups and a souvenir card of the type of coffee you're tasting. I went with the Hawaii Ka'u Roast and it was so good. Even though it was a black cup of coffee, it was really nice to drink. It was just so smooth. I loved it. There's a lot to see at the roastery and I'm just barely scratching the surface today. You can learn a bit about the process of how they roast their beans. You can pick up a fresh bag yourself and you can find some unique souvenirs that they don't sell at their normal stores. Now we're headed to Slate Coffee Roasters and they are known to have a deconstructed latte. So it's three glasses and it has like literally a deconstructed latte just as it said. So we're gonna try that out. Did I get the deconstructed latte? strong. I'm gonna like pour it over now. Oh, look at that. That looks good. And then they have some nice little latte art right there. Yeah, this is good. So good. Unless you really geek out on coffee, I wouldn't really recommend to get the deconstructed latte because sipping on straight espresso and milk on their own is not a super enjoyable experience, but the drinks here are great. They proudly roast their own coffee, which you can buy and take home for yourself, and the baristas here seem to really care about crafting the drinks well. The environment of the shop is one of my favorites in the city. The lofted ceilings allow for these huge windows to let in a ton of natural light. The space is minimal and airy. It features different artist work. They don't play music too loud and there's plenty of space to sit. I would say this is one of my favorite coffee shops in the city to go and get work done and drink some really good coffee. More Coffee is a Spanish-inspired cafe, and you will see that in their menu with items like the Diablo Mocha and Cafe Madrid. It's very popular among locals for their delicious coffee and fun latte art. All right, so that's what's so cool about this place. You get a fun little latte art. This time I got a cat, really stoked about it, and I got the Cafe Madrid. Cafe Madrid is like a very creamy, very sweet latte. And it comes with a little cookie. It's attached to the Moore Theater, hence its name, and was opened in 2011 by the maintenance manager of the Moore, who transformed the space from an old utility closet into what it is today. This is the coffee shop that I'm most excited to go to today. It's called Ghost Note Coffee. And their whole thing is they truly make like craft coffee drinks. Like they treat it as if 
you're making like a cocktail. Like they will shake your drink. It looks so cool. They have very interesting flavors. I'm just really excited to try this one out. Okay. Mm -hmm. about like a cup of coffee costing them five dollars and it's not worth it this is worth it i have never seen a coffee drink made like this before mm. the flavors really just taste like they blend together really nicely like the orange just blends right into the almond milk and it doesn't taste like too much of anything there's like, too much almond too much coffee or too much orange and it's so smooth like this is so good and the orange peel right here it kind of like activates your senses because right as like you put your nose up to it, you're smelling the orange as you're drinking the coffee. Love that. This is this is the winner of the day. Ghost Note Coffee. The drinks here at Ghost Note Coffee are unique and delicious. It's located in Capitol Hill and I would highly recommend it. Now we're headed over to Mr. West Cafe and Bar and I highly recommend this place. It is so freaking good. I haven't tried the coffee, but the food is really good. They also have drinks. They have wine tasting flights. They have cheese board. Overall, if you're looking for a place that has really good coffee, I'm assuming it's gonna be good, and delicious food, this is a great cafe. They have your classic drinks like lattes, along with a couple unique ones such as the coffee soda, which contains cold brew coffee, tonic water, and lime. The latte was pretty good, not my favorite of the day, but hey, gets the job done. The coffee and soda was less weird than I expected. It tasted mainly like tonic water with a bit of a coffee aftertaste. I don't really enjoy tonic water as it is, but if you're a big gin and tonic person, you might be surprised at how much you enjoy this drink. They also have a full menu of a ton of delicious food. I went with one of my favorites, which is the handsome salad with chicken. Right beneath the space you know we have the La Marzocco Cafe. And yes, just like the fancy Italian-made espresso machines. Here in Seattle, they have their only showroom and cafe where they serve up Italian coffee at its best. So I just got a coffee miso. It's a cold drink. There's no ice in it though. And on the top, it has like a kind of powdery coating to it. So, mm. oh, tiramisu, coffee miso. Coffee misu, that's how you say it. Okay, wow, that makes sense now. Sorry guys, it took me a second to get there. This is a coffee misu, like tiramisu. That's so smart because obviously tiramisu has coffee in it. Right off the bat, the flavors you taste are really just more like a sweet, creamy taste with the coffee aftertaste. Wow, this is really good, I like it. Couldn't have a lot of it though. The space is also shared with KEXP, which is an indie rock station here in Seattle. I really love this spot because it's so versatile. There's a record store, art, music, coffee, tables for working, and sofas for comfortable lounging. Even an ice cream machine. If you need a place to come escape from your life and feel like you're at a little rock concert, this is your coffee shop. And lastly, to finish off this video, I'm gonna take you to the first ever Starbucks. So here we go, there it is. It's right there and there's a huge line to go inside and it's just like any other Starbucks. Line that just keeps going and going and going and going and going. So, that's it, that's, that's it for Starbucks. <laughs> Okay. But you gotta hand it to Starbucks. They helped put Seattle on the map and shape the coffee culture that we now have in the city. As you can probably tell at this point, this video is about more than just coffee. It's about the unique environments that have been cultivated around the city for people to gather, work, and feel at home. And they just so happen to serve delicious coffee. So if you're ever in the area, I hope that you give some of these shops a try. What's up guys? This is me. I just finished editing this video. Woo! I just wanted to quickly say if you enjoyed this video and you're new here, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I would also really appreciate that. That just like helps support me as a person and as a brand and you know working with other brands and just like getting to keep making videos for a living. So if you want more videos from me, all the support you could give me, I'd really appreciate. Thank you so much for watching this video till the point you're watching this right now. Wow, thanks. Comment below that you're still watching if you are and I'll reply to you and I'll see you next time hopefully. All right, bye. There's a lot going on. We're gonna walk through it.
these are like these beautiful gold figurines and they cost like thousands of dollars. These ones actually aren't for sale, I don't think, but this one is, I don't know what it has to do with Starbucks, but it's, it's cool looking. I love her though, love her, she's cool. Um, and yeah, there's just like some cool stuff here. 